uh, well, like you mentioned, you got the Acorn Hill stuff coming. And Nate does the same yeah. type of thing where he's just good about collaborating with these creators. And we had Club Dr. Golf on, uh, I believe it was a week or two ago. And same type of thing. He's just having those collaborate, collaborating on getting that content made from just golf creators. And it leads to yeah. sales, too, because then people start seeing your brand that weren't seeing the brand. I mean, that's what simply happened with us is becoming aware of it. Yeah, yeah. We the goal is to the goal is to have rivals page. I mean, if you look at rivals page, if you go to our reels, I mean, it's not just me. It's not just rival. It's it's everybody that that wants to post and, and stuff. Because, um, you know, you go you look at these major golf brands, and you know, I understand they're massive, but they're really not even following anybody on Instagram except for you know these big people, and. Uh, we want to be – I come from a customer service from an industry background and for working at golf courses. And uh, I understand what it's like to make people feel like they're important or they're cared about. And so that's what our brand is about is to make people feel like, hey, we appreciate you for supporting Rival, right? We're just not ignoring you. We respond to people's DMs. We respond to people's posts. We like their posts. But we're going to continue to do that all the time. Yeah. I think that's awesome. You kind of hit it on the nose, TJ, like with the the Acorn Hills thing where, you know, we have we know we have a personal relationship with Nate, too. But Acorn Hills does the same thing where they actually value the customer's input and they repost people that are wearing their stuff. And you guys do a very good job of that, too, where, I mean, um, I see people, you know, they post about how they got it in the mail or they have it on the course and they're reviewing it. And you guys post it right away or you guys are like commenting on it and all that kind of stuff. And like you said, you don't see a lot of the top name brands that are doing that because like you said, I mean, they're they get big enough. They don't need to. But the customer service based thing is, is really cool. No, yeah, I totally agree. I, I think this is a, we are a brand for the people, by the people, and uh, we're, we're going to be posting everybody's stuff that they – because we're excited. When somebody buys something from us, I'm excited. When they buy a towel, I'm excited. When they buy golf clubs or a bag or, or, or what we have to offer right now, I get it in my phone, and I'm super excited about it because it's just somebody else that is supporting Rival, and if they're going to support Rival, I'm here to support them for sure. Cool. What's kind of a goal that you have for maybe your own golf game and then also a goal you have for the company just in the coming year? <sighs> my, goal, my goal for my golf game to, would to be to become a better golfer. Uh, I'm, I'm in this little phase right now where, like, you know how, like, you've got it down, you got your swing down, and then you just, for some reason, you, like, lose it for a little bit. And, like, yeah. I'm in that phase right now, and I'm hoping not to lose that phase. And I know even, like, the pros go through that phase where they're, like, crushing it, and then they, like, they kind of fall off for a little bit, but then they find it back. So I'm in that phase. But my goal is to to, to get out of that phase and I'm a decent golfer. I've golfed since I was 10. So I would love to go around and play with other creators. I would love to go around and play with our followers and create some content and get that on the rival page. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably my, my number one goal for playing is to get more content with other creators or other brands um, to post on the rival page. And then the goal for the brand is organic growth. We are not spending any money on advertising right now. Everything is coming straight from organic growth through oh. our customers purchasing the product, um, and then um, our customers purchasing the product, and then and what we do with that money that we make on it, which is not massive margins like some of these other direct D to D to C companies. Uh, mm -hmm. We're just rebuying more inventory with it and bringing in new product with it. So the goal yeah. for the next in the, over the next year is to kind of fulfill our. Our, our, our equipment line and then once we fill, fill, fulfill our equipment line hopefully then start advertising the product more because then we have more to offer because we started off with wedges which was great but what i realized was not everybody's in the wedge market right some people might need a putter or some people might, might need a bag or some people might need a towel but if i only have wedges to offer uh, i'm not going to get any customers out of it so our goal for the next year is to grow our product line and we started with wedges in May, and now we have putters, and we have bags, and we have towels. Um, and then I've got some prototype blade irons right here that uh, nice. hopefully will come out with by the end of the year, but we're still in testing with those. Heck yeah. yeah. The whole testing process has to be so cool, though, to like just getting different lofts, different lies, and, and, and you know, going through those. Because we... 
we talked like a bit with, like I said, Club Doctor Golf about he was testing mm-hmm. these products on how they were polishing the clubs, mm-hmm. which is fun because he's like going to garage shows and finding old clubs and seeing how they work. But to actually be like yeah. trying all these different clubs has got to be so much fun. Yeah, for like everything, we go to ten different manufacturers. We tell them the design that we want. They have them with the specs. We they send it to us, and then we kind of choose based off of all the numbers. We go to a simulator that's at a very good store uh, that they have a massive, really good simulator. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I've got buddies out here that we all test it as well. We play with it on the course. And then we choose the one that we think is the best. And the one that's the best is the winner. And then we bring that out to the, to the customers. And uh, we are not trying to make a Memphis Marshalls on these. Like our, 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 our um, irons are probably going to come out right around the price of the Tacoma irons, just because we want to be competitive in that space. And yeah. uh, I'm telling you guys, you would be very surprised at how much money these direct to consumer money, uh, direct to consumer companies are making selling it to you guys because they're selling it for about the same price as the major manufacturers are selling their product for in the stores. But they're not; mm-hmm. the, those major brands are not making all that money in their stores. Right. They're selling it to the store for half the price and then upselling it. Well, these direct to consumer brands are selling it directly to the customer and they're selling it at the same price, if not even a little bit more than what the major brands are are selling at the store for. And uh, we're not about that. We are about truly growing the game of golf. And if if we can make some what of a a margin to be able to repurchase product and then buy another half a product after that, we're good with that. I mean, that's so cool just right right there. I mean, giving like the insight and the background information of, you know, you you can always hear the, the... um age old thing that's like you know you get what you pay for type of thing or Mm -hmm. even though you're paying for a big time brand like that but hearing like the whole process behind it and then knowing that you're getting a quality product that they went out that you guys went out and tested and knew that it was good enough to put out to the people and then selling it for like a reasonable price like that's that's just speaks volumes about you guys and um these like i guess mom and pop like stores and shops yeah really really cool yeah, I appreciate that, brother. Yeah, we, you you uh, you have no idea all the testing that goes into this. I mean, we even went to 10 different manufacturers for our towels. You know, we just didn't want to come out with the – we didn't want to go to yeah. one manufacturer. because There's different qualities, right, in these manufacturers. You want to make sure that you're going to have a, that a, a company or a manufacturer that's going to send you good stuff every single time because you don't want to get a bad order and run out of inventory or – have to argue with these manufacturers that hey, this was not good quality. You really want to test out the, the manufacturers before mm-hmm. you choose. Before you choose, yeah. One. I think the club testing too has to make a bit of a difference because it's not these pros that are testing, you know, Callaway, TaylorMade, Titleist. It's more of you know average to scratch golfers that are, you know, swing speeds are much more similar to what the consumer is going to have. Because I, exactly. there's, there can't be that much of a difference, really, with, a like you said, a brand new Vokey wedge compared to a beat up used one or, you know, a rival wedge. It's when you get it in the consumer's hands, it probably feels so much better than a brand new Vokey wedge would. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm telling you right now. So if you go, I, I, I'm going to I'm going to send you guys each uh, um, some uh, rival wedges you have. Used Vokey wedges, I think, right? Is that what you said, TJ? I I have the Mac Daddy. I have Mac, two oh, yeah. Mac Daddy fours and a Mac Daddy three, but they're so, I bought so them used. Our wedges are as good as the major brands' brand mm-hmm. new wedges. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to send you our. I'm going to send you a rival wedge, and it is going to be better than your used wedge. And the reason why is going to be because of the brand new grooves that you have. Yeah. The whole reason of replacing the wedges is because of your grooves. Like you could buy, if you're replacing your used Vokey with a used or a used wedge with a used wedge, it's going to feel the same as your other wedge. You might get a little bit more spin because it's used a little bit less. But if you can buy a brand new wedge, get better numbers out of a brand new wedge that costs ninety nine dollars, or buy a used wedge for ninety nine dollars and not get as good of numbers, which wedge are you going to choose, right? Yeah. You're going to choose the one that gives you more backspin because what is that? That's that's what I want on the green. That's what most of these average golfers want on the mm-hmm. green. They want to see their ball stick and stop, right? If yeah. you're going to go by used wedges, your grooves are most likely more than not worn down. And yeah. uh, Rival, that was why we started. The Rival is here to help you get more backspin. Yeah, and that's what everyone wants, you know, because <laughs> we don't have yeah. the swing speeds uh-huh. anyway. So you, uh-huh. like you said... 
Could pros can't loop. get the backspin using a used wedge, and here's most average golfers trying to use a five-year-old wedge and expecting it to spin. But yeah, <laughs> could use that backspin this weekend. That's for sure. Yeah, well, I heard you had a member guest this weekend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we came out on the on the constellation bracket. We did okay, but we, rough, rough couple of days to start. Well, that's good though. Were you at least you won the constellation bracket? We exactly. did. Yeah, we, yeah. Boom. <laughs>